bearing shame upon a tree. Then my heart was touched with sorrow, for my soul. My heart is filled this morning, and we're already blessed, and I'm looking forward to sharing the Word of God with you. When Paul told young Pastor Timothy to preach the Word, he used a Greek word for preach that means to proclaim, to herald. So every pastor has the responsibility to preach a very specific message, the Word, or literally the Logos is a reference to the scriptures and not a pastor's viewpoint or opinion. So when a pastor writes a sermon, he carefully studies the Bible. He selects a text of scripture. He pays close attention to the original languages if possible. He pulls an outline from that text and has his audience follow along. He adds illustrations and an introduction and conclusion that helps apply the scripture to their lives process takes many hours every week. So for today's sermon, I'd like to literally preach the word to be obedient to the Lord today. I've assembled my sermon by weaving together Bible verses that tell the Easter story. The title of my message this morning is The Emmaus Road. My proposition is Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I pray that your love for the word of God would increase as I give it to you this morning. And simply quoting and reading the word of God is a lost treasure in the modern church. I'm not going to be announcing every reference that I quote this morning, but my hope is simply that reading the word of God to you is a blessing on this Easter morning. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain women with them came to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said, 
Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. And they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the leaven and all the rest. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. Now behold, two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And so it was, while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this, that you have with one another as you walk and you're sad? Then one, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which have happened there in these days? And he said to them, what things? And they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yea, and certain women of our company who had arrived at the tomb early astonished us. He did not find his body. But they came, saying they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him... They did not see. Jesus said unto them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart, to believe in all the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses, and all the prophets, Jesus expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. For God, who at various times in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Beginning at Moses, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever thou hast formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. God said, I am that I am. I am the Lord. There is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And the Lord took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it, to keep it. 
And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may eatest freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work that he had made, and he rested on the seventh day. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his, who do you his pleasure. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. For I created the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created until iniquity was found in thee. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found in heaven any more. And that great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto utter darkness until the great judgment day. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. And death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you, 
but he will not hear. And Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called out unto Adam, Where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. I hid myself. And God said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, Well, the woman gave us to me. She gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this thou hast done? And the woman said, Well, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, I will put enmity, war, between thee and the woman, between thy offspring and her offspring. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the first promise of an offspring of Eve called the Messiah, who would crush Satan's head through the death, burial, and resurrection. And unto Adam also, and to his wife, he did make coats of skins for them, and clothe them. Therefore the Lord God sent forth Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. And so he drove out man, and he placed in the east of garden cherubim, a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare another, his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain... Cain was a tiller of the ground. And it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering of the firstborn of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering, but Cain and his offering, he had not respect. Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou angry, and why is thou countenance fallen? If you do what is right, won't you be accepted? And if you do not know right or do right, sin lieth at the door. Cain did not do right, because he did not offer God a blood sacrifice. Hebrews 9.22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, forgiveness of sin. Leviticus 17.11 For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. The Lord spoke the same things unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, one lamb per house. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male in the first year. You shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts of the upper doorposts of the house. Wherein they shall then eat it. And thus shall you eat it. And this is the Lord's Passover. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. 
after the Lord led Israel out of Egypt, the Lord said unto Moses, Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Now Aaron shall offer the bull for a sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him as a sacrifice for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat, shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement for him, to let him go as a scapegoat into the wilderness. Then shall he kill the goat for the sin offering, that is for the people, and bring the blood within the veil of the Holy of Holies and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat on top of the Ark of the Covenant and he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgression and all their sin. And so how shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. And when he shall make an end of reconciling of the holy place in the tabernacle of the congregation and on the altar, he shall then bring the live goat and Aaron shall place both his hands on the head of the goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins. Putting on the head of the goat shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And that goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall be let go into the wilderness. And this shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me in the mount and be there. I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them to them. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. Now if a soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord, though he doesn't even know it, yet he is guilty and he shall bear his iniquity. For whosoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point becomes guilty of all. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh, no human being will be justified in his sight since through the law comes the knowledge of sin. 
Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster, to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. For the law is only a shadow of the good things to come, not the very form of things. It can never make perfect those who draw near by the same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year. But in those sacrifices, there was a reminder again made of sin every year. But it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, God hath no pleasure. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, an heir of God through Christ, Messiah, thus it is written, and thus it behooved, or thus it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead third, the third day. And that repentance and the remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Messiah shall be cut off from the land of the living, but not for himself but to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision of the prophecy and to anoint the most holy place. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. He will be a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to the houses of Israel as a trap and a snare in the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground he hath no form of comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised, rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. But thou wilt not leave my soul in the grave, 
neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, and thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seat. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. The stone which the builders refused will become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, a foal of a donkey. I will pour upon the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplications, and they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him, as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, they were come to Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, and sent Jesus to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall see a donkey tied in a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them to me. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and they brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. A very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before, that followed, cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord! Hosanna to the highest! And when he was coming to Jerusalem... All the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And it came to pass, Jesus said unto his disciples, You know, that after two days is the feast of Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people under the place of the high priest who is called Caiaphas. And they consulted that they might take Jesus by force and kill him. One of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will you give me? I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They led Jesus away to the high priest. And with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death and found none. Many bear false witness against him, but their witnesses agreed not together. And the high priest stood up in the midst 
and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it with the witness against thee? But he held his peace. He answered nothing. And again the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am Yahweh. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Oh, and the high priest rent his clothes and saith, What need we any further witnesses? You've heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. And some began to spit on him, cover his face and to buffet him, and to say to him, Prophesy! And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. The whole multitude arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. And Pilate said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered into the hands of the Jews. But now, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said unto him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had answered this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. And the Jews were more fierce, saying, he stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. Well, when Pilate heard Galilee, he answered and asked whether the man was a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belongeth unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself was at Jerusalem at the time. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he desired to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done. Then Herod questioned him with many words, but Jesus answered him nothing. The chief priests and the scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. They arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. And Pilate said unto them, You brought me this man, one that perverteth the people. And behold, I have examined him before you. I have found no fault in this man touching those things wherever you accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him. And lo, nothing is worthy of death is done unto him. But they cried, Crucify him! Crucify him! They had answered all the people, His blood be on us and our children. The soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him a whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him. Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. They put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail Jesus, King of the Jews. They spit on him. They took the reed and they smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him and put on his own raiment. And led him away to crucify him. 
And when they came unto the place called Golgotha, that is to say, the place of the skull, they crucified him. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They parted his raiments and cast lots. They set up over his head an accusation. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. There were two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand, one on the left. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried in a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed, and gave him to drink. Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, paid in full. Jesus cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did shake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints arose. Now when the centurion, and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. When evening was come, there was a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and he begged the body of Jesus. And Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. He laid it in his own new tomb, which had been hewn out of the rock. And he rolled the great stone to the door of the sepulcher, and he departed. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in and didn't find the body of Jesus. And it happened as they were perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. They were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth. And the men said, why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Well, they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. But their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they didn't believe them. Well, Peter arose and ran to the tomb. Stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves. He departed, marveling to himself what had happened. Well, now behold, two of them were traveling the same day to the village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. Well, they talked together of these things which had happened, and so it was. Well, they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so they did not know it was him. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, 
Jesus expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, because without the shedding of blood there is no remission. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. For Christ also, also has suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened in the spirit. And you, who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through his death. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John the Baptist seeth Jesus and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. For Christ, our Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed. God presented him as an atoning sacrifice, the propitiation, through faith in his blood, to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his restraint, God passed over over the sins previously committed. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am am the bread of life, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And as Jesus, Cleopas, and the other disciple drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, Jesus made as though he would have to go on further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it's toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them. You see, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. And their eyes were opened, 
and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us? While he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures, and they rose in the same hour, returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and to them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. No, all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was the prophet of the Lord that has spoken, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer, to rise from the third, dead from the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the God of all peace, that brought again our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you mature in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Christ Jesus, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, I pray that as this foolish preacher has proclaimed the Logos, the Word of God, that it would be sealed in our hearts that death has no more sting because Jesus arose from the grave. Lord, I pray that you would bless our sweet church this day as we reflect on the resurrection. May we rejoice. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.